We're here with Barb Samarzic from Ford's Powertrain. She's going to tell us a little bit about where Ford's going with regard to gasoline technology and electrification. Sure. Um, if I had to sum it up real succinctly, I would say it's not a one-size-fits-all strategy. I think we're going to see various propulsion systems available in a given platform so that consumers can make a choice that's right for their driving needs, their driving styles, and, and where they sit with respect to environmental conscientiousness. Um, from our perspective at Ford, the way we see that vision is a global platform, so we have the body, you know, various bodies on a given chassis. And then our job in the powertrain arena is to make sure that we provide those powertrain options. So whether it's a traditional gasoline engine, an EcoBoost engine, a diesel engine, or the various forms of hybridization that we've announced, and as well as those that we have already in the marketplace, from a full hybrid to micro hybrids to um, plug-in hybrids, and then our recent announcement on a battery electric vehicle. So if you think about a consumer coming into a showroom having uh, a variety of top hats off of a given size platform and then being able to choose a power, a power train or a propulsion system that's right for them, I think that's where it's, things are going to be for a while as we transition from the state we're in now, which is heavily fossil fuel dependent, to one that is electrified. So in, in Europe, for example, it's 50% or more diesel. And they look at what we're doing with hybrids here and they think, why would you want to, to do that when diesel is, is already there? You do quite well at diesels mm -hmm. in Europe, but it's going to take a while before it, it, it happens here. Yeah, and interesting, the answer to that question isn't a technology answer. It's a public policy answer. Um, in Europe, the uh, European uh, nations made a decision to drive an energy policy, to drive CO2 down. To do that, they taxed petrol, and they've kept the price of diesel below petrol. Doesn't consumers will always make, at the end of the day, they are rational and they make a rational decision. So it didn't take consumers long to figure out that from a pocketbook perspective, diesel was the better solution for them. And diesels took off, fulfilling the energy policy that was set in place. And today, it's about 65% diesel engines, and they are great engines, as you've said. In the U.S., we haven't had that type of an energy policy. Uh, diesel fuel over the past year has been anywhere from 30, 40 cents more a gallon than uh, gasoline, up to over a dollar, I've seen it. At that price delta, regardless of the absolute value of the fuel, at that price delta, it's a hard uh, value equation for consumers to make in the U.S. because they're going to be paying a premium for the diesel engine in the dealership to begin with because the diesel is more expensive both as an engine as well as to emissionize it. And then every time they go to the, to the filling station, they pay a premium. And when they look at that and just do the simple calculations, they can see that the payback from that diesel engine, it just isn't going to be there for them. So EcoBoost is, is intended to provide many of the same benefits that, that diesel does mm -hmm. with a higher level of energy out of, out of every gallon of, of gas, better, better mileage. From the start, it's been targeted at the higher, uh, the, the larger engines, mm -hmm. higher horsepower. It seems more of a horsepower issue you know, we're, we're putting this in the V6s and the, the V8s? We're, well, let me give you our strategy. Our, the start of our strategy was it's still a fuel economy as well as performance. And the concept is there's no compromise here to consumers. Um, first of all, just so everybody knows what we're talking about with an EcoBoost, it's a gasoline engine with direct injection as well as turbocharging. The direct injection combined with the turbocharging enables you to um, not sacrifice any kind of fuel economy with respect to a compression ratio. And the turbocharging gives you great, great improvements in horsepower and torque. So you get diesel-like torque curves. One of the things that makes diesel so fun to drive is, you know, you hit that peak torque like the minute you step on the throttle. It just goes straight up. Same with a turbocharged gasoline engine. So we've got the, the fun to drive. Now, our strategy is, given that huge increase in the, um, the horsepower and the torque associated with the turbos, we can downsize the engine and take the displacement down provide the customer with as good or better performance feel and get the benefits of a smaller displacement engine. In the engine world, the biggest lever you can pull for fuel economy improvement is downsizing displacement. That's the, the biggest lever. So for example, in our, um, in our Flex and in our uh, uh, Lincoln MKS, where we're introducing EcoBoost engines, instead of having V8 engines, which would be traditional, larger 
horsepower and torque displacement engines for consumers that perhaps have a lot of towing needs or they like a performance feel, they want to, you know, they, they enjoy that. Um, they would traditionally have bought V8 engines, and most of the competitors to our products would have V8 engine offerings for that consumer. We have a V6 offering, so no, no delta in fuel here. Same fuel as you're going to get in your naturally aspirated, what people would think is entry-level V6, but you get all the performance feel of a V8. So it is an, it is an uh, environmentally conscientious strategy, and we're taking that same strategy, and very shortly we'll be seeing those announcements coming, and taking you know, a V6 and displacing it with an I-4 and doing exactly the same thing, getting I-4 fuel economy, V6 performance. So it's really a no compromise strategy. Now it doesn't hit the absolute fuel economy of a diesel engine. It does come close, especially when we combine it with technologies like stop start where you know you pull up to a light, your engine shuts off, then when you take off again it keeps going. And other technologies we have around in our full line of six speed transmissions. But again, in the U.S., where diesel is priced always at a premium to petrol, it's, it's the right strategy to really make a, a substantial difference in our CO2 footprint. So with stop-start mm -hmm. and with, with the six-speed automatic transmissions, you can gain a lot of the benefits that, the, that hybrids presently have. I mean, in town, one of the ways that, that a hybrid is, is ahead, in, in my knowledge, is because of stop-start. The electric, well, the, the ability to run on the electric motor is what gives the hybrids their advantage. And no conventional engine is going to approach that. You, you, you have to have a battery to store the energy and a motor to drive the vehicle. And once you do that, it allows you to completely wean yourself off the gasoline and um, get, you know, and provide electric power. But I've driven a couple of diesels that, that have stop start technology. Mm -hmm. So the, the BMW 123D, the Mini D. You, you pull up to a light, it's disconcerting at first. It is, it is. You know, you throw it in neutral and, and, and the engine stops. It takes a little while to get, to get used to it. But that's going to start to happen with gasoline engines Absolutely. here. Yeah, but that's a maybe an incremental 3% or so fuel economy versus a hybrid, which are substantial fuel economy improvements. Again, with the hybrid, you shut the engine off, not just at when you've stopped the car, but you shut the engine off when you're driving around at, you know, 30 miles per hour in a, a medium torque situation for, you know, quite a range. And, and with, with the six-speed transmission, the ability at highway speeds to drop down to a close to idle speed yeah. with enough torque is where you really gain the benefits that, that's the for highway. That's the benefits of having uh, increasing um, number of gear ratios in your transmission because right. you allow the engine to run at its optimum um, RPM. Right, you can keep taking the engine speed down because you have different gear ratios to choose from and keep optimizing that relationship. That was good. Well, Barbara, I want to thank you very much for My taking pleasure. the time to speak thank with us. Thank you. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you.